All right, here we go with the front. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the tie rod end. All right, so now that the nut is off, let me see if I can tap this out. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two bolts holding the caliper. There we go. One more to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and disconnect the brake line, the hard line from the brake line. Tighten it, this is going upwards. Came off easy. Brake fluid coming down. There we go. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the clip holding the brake line in place. Alright, and now we can remove the brake line. and the caliper. I am so glad I am changing this setup here. There it is, a caliper and a bunch of spiders. Right. So what I'm going to do next is uh, remove the brake rotor. And the way to do that is, first I have to remove the dust, uh, dust cap that's here. There's another reason why you want to upgrade to the SN95 setup because you don't have to do this every time you change the brakes, I mean the rotors. You just change the rotor and you leave the hub, the hub alone. So you got that. Right there for now. And there's little, another cotter pin that's in the way. You're going to have to straighten that out before you attempt to pull it. Now that you got that somewhat straight, I'm going to try to pull that out. Alright. There we are. I guess I could have straightened that out more. There we go. There's that cotter pin. And then there's this, uh, this little crown. 
I'm going to pull that out. Come on, buddy. Oh, I guess part of the cotter pin had broken off. That's why that wasn't coming out. Anyway, now you have a little nut that you need to deal with. So they're usually just not that tight to begin with. Okay. That. And now what you can do is just pull on the rotor a little bit. And then you'll get this bearing out and that's the bearing behind that you can see it back there okay so we're pretty much good to go here all right so I'm gonna set you guys on this side to get a better view of the action I'm gonna clean up all of this spider stuff You can tell there's quite a bit of them. Okay. So here is part of the cotter pin for the ball joint. We're going to straighten that out. There it is. Okay. Let's just clean this up. Okay, so what I'll need to do first is remove this shock bolt here so that I can have access to the ball joint. that easy without trouble it's out might as well just loosen this up already since I'm at it there we go but we're not going to take this one out yet what I need to do is possibly I'm going to have to get the jack and hold the control arm in place because the only thing holding it from falling down right now it's uh, this bolt right here on the shock so I'm gonna put the jack under that under there and then I'll be able to remove this bolt here too so that I can have better access to the to the bolt here Remember guys, safety is first. Okay. It's out. Make sure. Okay. So now I got the shock out of the way. And I could probably fit the gun in there. I'm gonna try. Okay, so I can't put the gun in there, but I can fit this wrench there. And that's gonna have to do. Hopefully, I can break it loose. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so you're going to want to leave a few threads on the ball joint because that's what's going to keep the ball joint from popping all the way out. 
and you're going to want to remove the tie rod end again. All right, and we're going to put some of these bolts back on the shock if we can. You don't even have to put the bolt back on, you can just use a screwdriver or something. This is going to keep it from coming all the way down. All right, and this is where the where the fun part starts. We're gonna beat up on this spindle with a, a hammer so that the ball joint releases. Okay, so, all right, here we go, guys. So there we go. You can see now that the nut is the only thing holding the control arm in place um, and also the jack. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and jack this up again. Okay, and we're going to remove the rest of this nut. So you got the ball joint nut, and then we're going to pull out a screw driver or a pry bar. Whatever you use, or if you use one of the bolts, pull that out. And basically, the spindle is free to go. Gotta muscle it out of the way. Alright. Cool. Alright, so at this point, if uh if you're not replacing your um control arm bushings, all you have to do is deal with the with a ball joint situation, alright? So your preferred option would be to put an SN95 ball joint in the place of this one here or they sell a spacer that uh, you can use that will work with the spindles that you're going to be using um, however I would rather replace the ball joint if it's worn out but if it's good and uh, you can tell this one's not terrible but it's not you know ideal but I can tell the control arm bushes are worn out so I'm going to have to remove the arm for that I'm gonna have to remove the spring and then there's two bolts holding the arm in place. All right, so right now, I'm gonna slightly lower. Before I do any of that, actually, I have to uh, disconnect the sway bar link. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys, there we are. So now it's completely off. Now, if I release the pressure from the shot from the from the jack, the spring is going to push all the way down, right? So you need to be real careful here, especially with a uh, OEM springs, because believe it or not, those are longer and have more pressure than uh, the aftermarket ones. At least the way they're compressed, because they're longer. Be real careful in doing this. I'm go slow as possible. So right now there's no more real pressure on the spring, so but you still gotta be careful with it. Alright, there we are. So I just showed you how not to do it. But if you don't have access to tools, you know, you just gotta find a way to make it safe. Alright, so there you see the control arm now. Now there's uh, only two bolts holding it in place. I'm gonna remove those two and then we should be able to uh, remove this so that we can take it to the machine shop and have the ball joints and the control arm bushings pressed in. All right guys, so this is where I'm stopping tonight. Um, as you can see, 
everything got pretty much disassembled I was able to remove both control arms All right so tomorrow if I'm lucky I'll be able to find a machine shop that is open so that they can uh, press in new ball joints and upper control arm bushings onto the arms and that way I can start reassembling everything so if you guys are interested in seeing the swap get finished please uh, subscribe to my channel leave a comment like subscribe thank you guys for watching thank you for your time all right so this is where I'm stopping for tonight as you can see everything's pretty much disassembled I was able to take everything apart tomorrow if I'm lucky I'll be able to find a machine shop that is open so that I can take uh, so that I can take my control arms and have them press new ball joints and control arm bushings into them and that way I can start reassembly so thank you guys for watching and please consider subscribing and checking out uh, the next video where I'm gonna uh, reassemble the front end on this car take care guys see you soon